is Art Dust with Glenda Gibson and Donna Druin hiding behind a pile of books <laughs> because today we are talking about some of the books that have influenced us. I've really enjoyed uh, going through my bookcase this morning and dragging out the books, but there are so many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to help to to talk about that we are just not going to get through it. Um, thought no. I was just going to hold them up and fling them across the room. Quickly, but <laughs> but I, I wanted to go into a bit more depth. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about one of the first books that influenced me as an artist. Um, God called me to be an artist uh, in 2006, saying develop yourself as an artist yeah. and I cried out I was having a hard time with family work health all sorts of stuff and yeah. um, I knew I wasn't going to be able to continue teaching and I said well what what God and he called me to be an artist which I got completely wrong started an art business that wasn't wasn't what it was about but um, we got to know what was Donna actually Donna has a whole story behind it. Well, although we, it's so long ago we can't remember. It's about no. 2012. Yeah, so we long got, ago. We got to know this lovely lady called uh, Cindy West. She's now yes. Cindy Limerick, uh, Limbrick, but yeah. uh, she was Cindy West then. And, uh, and yeah, she's she wrote a book called Saying Yes. I'll read, it, I'll read the exact title, Saying Yes, Accepting God's Amazing Ind Invitation to Artists and the Church. And it's Cindy West. And she wrote it in 2008. Mm -hmm. um, so back in 2012, it was quite a new book. Um, and I'm just going to say, um, for those, those that are on YouTube, you'll, you'll be able to see the front cover, the back cover, um, and I'll find an example in the book because I remember book, finding it at a oh, it's Grapevine's bookshop and it sort of sang off the bookshelf. It was like going, pick me, pick me. Yeah. I was like, ooh, what's this funky cover book? Exactly. But it's not just funky on the outside. It's no. funky on the inside. It's the first yeah. time I'd seen this sort of thing where there was a bit of um, – arty papery spottiness around the number yeah but there were two or three different sorts of fonts little squirrels here and there there were um the words that are important were put in a little arty bubble the word like the word linger is in this little little bubble there's photographs there's drawings her drawings yeah. off to the other side of edge of the page just logged yeah. on in a dead arty way and there's Big fonts and little fonts, and it was just so cool to have know, something and it, like that. And then there's Kinsuguri, I'm going to pronounce it correctly, Kinsuguri, the Japanese thing, is in there, the, the gold in the, in the cracks, and you know, when you're mending. That's all the way back then, and it's so funny because I've fallen over it and fallen over it, and it's like, it's, it's the first thing people go to me, do you know about this? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, that the the yeah jar that gets broken is probably one of the most um, significant things in this book, and I have reread it since, and I've written to her, and I said, Cindy, you should re you should rewrite um, this book. We we know Cindy. Yeah. Um, she came to uh, one of our conferences in about two thousand and twelve, thirteen, something like that. Um, we we said we have we'll give you accommodation and food and we'll pick you up from the airport but that's all we can give you <laughs> yes. and bless her she came anyway there's about 30 people at the conference and she came with a guest actually she came with somebody else with Frankie um, a wonderful together. a wonderful photographer who traveled with yeah. her and yeah so uh, we got to know her but this but we read the book I read the book before I ever met her so Basically, she's a she was a filmmaker. She led a big church, and she was in charge of the music. I mean, she could yeah, take Colorado you from, Springs, wasn't it? Colorado Springs. She could take yeah. you from earth to heaven with the music. She knew how to do it. Yeah. She worked 
phenomenally hard. Um, and uh, she decided she had to make this sculpture, well, this artwork, a photography artwork to do with breaking a pot. She's going to break the pot um, and put it back to... together, but play yeah. it in reverse. And it was, she was going to have light in it and the light shining through the cracks yeah. and, and all it that. It was sort to of do thing. with they'd had a huge wildfire in Colorado and it's, they'd gone up to the edge of Colorado Springs and she'd gone, and I remember the passage because she's driving around Colorado Springs and she saw this vase on this doorstep and it was charred on one side but the other side was perfect yeah, yeah. I mean that that just moved me so much because she got a team of people to paint yeah. pots put pot plants in and give them to people that had lost their homes yeah. in those bushfires <laughs> but this is more of a, a personal moment yeah. where she's trying to do this art photography artwork and it just all goes wrong and in the end, she realises that it's not about putting the pot back together. It's about giving her brokenness over to God bit by bit. Um, and that's what she does. And then she takes the photographs. So I'm just going to read a tiny bit from the book. I handed over piece after piece, marvelling at how God rebuilt the pottery, both the one on the table and the one working on it. God, I choose to trust you with pride and insecurity and fear of rejection, I said. I choose to trust you even with the bane of my existence, never to find true love. I trust you. I really do. Have your way with all of these pieces. I don't want to hold them anymore. Mm. And he patiently completed the work never grabbing pieces from me, but faithfully receiving them as I laid them in his palm. He didn't ask for me to work a piece in any particular order, but seems delighted seeing how I could cause things to unfold. This is how trust feels, I thought, feeling God's fingers brush against mine as I handed over what was not mine to hold. Minutes eased into hours. The jar stood one final shard resting beside its base. Go ahead, Cindy. It's time to finish the work. So that's that's just before she finishes the pottery. Um, so, you know, that, that was the... This book was about working with God in the process of creating the artwork. And listening yeah. to God and seeing, and that's kind of um, the first time I'd properly come across that from a from another artist, yeah. besides Donna, who's already can talk about that sort of stuff. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I, I her her book was the first time I'd read something where someone wasn't saying artists were just for messy church, and they weren't just for running the kids' workshop, or they weren't just for doing pretty pictures on the overhead. You know, it was about it was about it about far more about your own. I mean, Worship Academy had taught us about um, being a discipleship. You know, it was about how you know about writing and understanding that what the make the works we make are from our heart and 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 you know and they they taught in music and we taught and we had to translate everything into color and tone and 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 quietness and loudness and. We translated all those terms they used, but this was the first time somebody was talking to us directly about art, because mm. there were other, you know, yeah. So this book was like the first one of, then became many. It was like somebody had opened, she'd written the written this book, and then it became yeah. a floodgates. It's really interesting if you look at the dates in the books you read. They're all around about two thousand six, two thousand and nine. A whole lot of them just it's the Holy Spirit just obviously yeah. inspired a whole lot of people around that time. Yeah, um, but these ones got, are most of these got, are new ones. <laughs> God was doing that. But I mean people have been writing, they're still writing, and yeah. I'll probably will we'll probably write ours, Donna, one day. One day. Your turn, um, Donna. Have you got one? <laughs> one? One? How can I say one? Okay. Um start. 
start okay so i have a, a wealth of books here I, i've jokingly just gone and grabbed most of the books off of one part of my shelves because i just thought well i don't i don't know how i can pick one book more than any other um you know i like to dip in and out my books as well so like if i've got a favorite one i just go back and reread it this one is literally this is from ray hughes um and it's literally 101, 107 things you forgot to say. So it's like little, little nice bursty things to read each day. And I have That's a couple great. of those. He is great. I have a couple of those. Um, I have this is the Cory Miller daily daily prayer book, which is really lovely. I have books that I think more of that shape my daily life. Um, this one, the Camouflage Sacred by Joanna Hargreaves, is just beautiful. I mean, it's just I just yeah. I sometimes just think ah. Oh, I don't know what words to say anymore, God. What what can I say? And then, then I'll open a page and she'll just say, breathe in. And I'm like, okay, all right. I'll just, I'll just breathe in and breathe out. Sometimes I just need that. Um, I've been wading my way through Nick Kay's current, current book. Um, it's just, it's extraordinary. I, I, there's so much in here. And there, What's there it is called, Donna? Faith, Hope and Carnage. Um and it's a conversation. Now, I wish I'd bought this book on Audible. I wish I'd got the listened to version because it is a conversation. And I find reading conversations a bit weird. I find them a bit like, oh, oh, I kind of, yeah. Um, this book, it's not a Christian book, but this book is about, this is Robert McFarlane's uh, Landmarks. And it's about language that we no longer use for describing land and my work is and sometimes when you write stuff or when you sometimes the sound of a word can trigger something else in a painting and I find this quietly fascinating to uh, like there's a word in here that I absolutely love it's called smooth which is the tiny gap underneath a hedge that an animal makes to escape and I love that I love this idea of this tiny fairy little creature this book's about poetry it's by Malcolm Geet. Um, and it's uh, I, sometimes I really struggle to explain, but okay, so I'm going to go to my main author. I've decided to go for an author. So here are Makoto Fujimura. I have a couple of his on Kindle as well. Um, but the one the one everyone would probably expect me to talk about would be this one, which is Art and Faith, which is his latest one which is brilliant, very, very good. But actually, the one that really got under my skin is a bit different from his other books. Um, so Science and Beauty is about... Um, Makoto Fujimura um, is an Ahonga artist. So he works with pigments and with gold leaf and grinds them and then I don't know how he quite does it but he puts it onto the canvas with a medium I imagine somehow and spreads them and then does he's done huge amounts of work he's very very popular in the states um but he is a artist who is studio was near the twin towers during that time period of the September 11th attacks and he talks about that in Refractions um, and the impact it had. But he, yeah, he's a bit really big. But anyway, Science and Beauty. This book is about the persecution of Japanese Christians and his response to that. Now, this book sent me down the world's longest rabbit hole. I've never known a book to do this. I mean, look, look it's just full of like reference notes. But to read this book, you have to go and read The Silence. And The Silence is about the persecution of Japanese um, Christians. And about, and it really made me think about how I express my faith and how I... And the danger and the responsibility of expressing our faith. So the, the, the priests in the, in the story, in the, it's an account, true story account, the priests in the story, they, they vowed to silence because they realised that they were never going to stop the persecution. And that if they wanted, they, they understood that if they wanted their faith to Christianity to survive during this time period, 
that the only way was to hide it and to bury it. So, so, so you read The Silence or you can watch the film. There is a film and it's really hard watch or really hard read. It's, it's, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're talking about persecution, which is just mm-hmm. horrific. But then he talks about the beauty of silence and it really made me think about mm-hmm. where the silence is in where is the silence in our work and the beauty of holding our faith in ourselves and not necessarily and i I really made me think about well how does someone know know that i'm christian well they know by my actions by who i am um but i also understand tea and this tea ceremony because the tea ceremony some of it is they adapted it so they could have communion as part of the tea ceremony and so it really changed my thinking about, well, I don't have to be standing on a street corner and I don't have to be telling every single human that I meet. And actually I can, I can lead my life in a very Christian way. Um, yeah, it, it really, it really challenged me. It was, um, a, quite a rabbit hole book, but it has, it has had quite an, an influence on me, um, in a very, Oh, yeah, a very different way but in a very like you know understanding that actually you can be a trickle of water and not a flood because a flood is destructive mm-hmm. yeah 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 some of the little things donna's told me about the book um made me realize i couldn't read it it's, it's no. going to be too it's really hard for me to read yeah yeah it's a very hard read but actually it's very um yeah, it, it, it's really good. I mean, it's very, very good. I was really excited to read it. And then I said, it said, do not pass this point if you've not read this book. And I was like, oh, no, I've got to go and read another book. And then I got to another point And then it was like, now you have to read this book. So I, had, I went and understood the tea ceremony because I didn't understand the tea ceremony and all of what it signified. But they put the communion inside and how you can hide, you know. And I began to think of my art in a very different way. And what else have I got in my pile? That's Oh, I have... A happy book. I have this one, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Oh, it's it's just a nice, happy read. It's lovely. Yeah. But what I really love in here is the fact she talks about the fact that ideas can happen simultaneously. Like sometimes we can be given an idea and if we don't follow it up, often that idea is given to somebody else. And I thought that was really interesting because I'd seen that happen and I was like, oh. So, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. There are ideas out there waiting to happen. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm not sure I entirely believe that's true, quite like that. But um, when early early on in my painting I went to a prophetic art conference and I was wanting to draw the tree of life. Um, yeah. And then I saw this painting that this person had done of the tree of life that was superb, absolutely beautiful. And I thought, well, I can never paint anything like that. I'm not going to try. I'm not going to do it. Um, But what I've learned is it's the same spirit and we all have our own voice and somebody might listen to that artist's voice. Somebody might listen to my voice. So all the voices have to be out. It's It's the same spirit. Yeah, yeah. No, it, that was that was a great book to read. It was really, yeah. really down to earth as an artist. You know, get yeah. get a day job if you need one. <laughs> <laughs> Pay the um, bills. Just, yeah. just just keep going. Yeah, that was a fun this, book. This this is a really good book. Uh, the one I haven't got, which I've got on my Kindle. Now I have books on my Kindle, which I obviously can't show to you physically. But one that really. Um, is one I read during lockdown uh, by Robin Wall Kimmerer, and it's not a Christian book. Uh, she is a Native American First Nation person, and she talks about how a relationship to land, and that's really. And I got, I, I started reading. I read the sample first on Kindle because I was like, oh, I can't go to a bookstore and look at books. So you know, you, you get the sample bit on Kindle, and I was reading that, and I was got really excited, and I was like, I really want to read this book, so I. I I bought it and it's called braiding sweetgrass and it's about the relationship plants have with each other and the relationship man has with plants and i've actually started to grow my garden in a similar way and it's like i'm really enjoying watching my garden grow with the sweet corn at the back and the beans and then the 
and that's all come from there but actually she talked about things and I think yeah my grandfather used to say that leave some for the birds it's not all for us and about actually leaving space for nature and yeah I've I've yeah and, and I, I don't know how that influences my artwork yet but I'm sure it will <laughs> but I found that very, a very interesting yeah yeah yeah, we both we both read quite widely. I think Donna's a quicker reader than I am, and quite a lot of the books I read are the ones that I've nicked from Donna. Yeah. Um, but but we got to know another guy from the states uh, yeah. called Chris John Otto, and he wrote a book in oh, two oh, thousand. Wow. Well, his experience his experience is two thousand six, the same time as us. So it wasn't long after that. That, that, that this book was written um, and probably the one of the main themes I got from that is that just as Mary had said yes to, to Jesus in filling her and bringing Christ into the world when we yeah. say yes to God we incarnate God we make visible the invisible yeah. through our art um, so that, that comes up in his book. But the thing that I remember from his book and I hold on to mostly is that he had a vision. He was visited by an angel. He was taken up into heaven and he saw lots of things. But I just want to read this a tiny little bit um, that I just love. As I was beginning to take it all in, I was lifted off my feet and brought down on the farthest circle as I approached the crowd, I saw that the people were not wearing white robes, but their own clothes. They were not doing the same dance, but each was doing their own dance. This really puzzled me, since they continued to hold hands. In the crowd, I saw faces of friends who'd recently died, and even recognisable saints. They were all completely whole and alive. So, what he'd seen before this bit was circles of uh, what, what people dressed in white, in circles, dancing. Um, and they were dancing in time with each other. But once he yeah. got closer, he saw that actually they were in their own clothes and they were doing their own dance, but they were still able to hold on to each other. Yeah. And that whole thing that uh, we're completely in, ourselves there's no one else like us we will dance our own dance we will wear our own clothes we'll have our own style our own expression but all together we're still together and we're still a part yeah. of the body of christ and we're still a part of the mission on earth which i really loved love that idea yeah i was thinking yeah. perhaps i mean we the books i picked up i realized i know a lot of these authors we should we should interview them um I'm just. I'm going to share a book now. I mean, we have run out of time. I wanted to talk. <gasps> I wanted to talk about in depth um, Andrew wow. Peterson, but I think we'll talk about him another time. He's a, he's a book to... I've nicked from Donna. <laughs> it's two books. She made me read them in order. I did because um, you should. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> well, I'll just mention Andrew Peterson briefly. He's a songwriter, actually. <laughs> Um, he started the, is it called The Rabbit Room? Yes. The Rabbit Room, where artists get together and... Hutchmoot. Hutchmoot. Oh, hang no. on, sorry, my... Hutchmoot, okay. yeah. I think it's called Hutchmoot. No, the thing they get together in is Hutchmoot, but The Rabbit Room is their podcast. Right, something like that. Anyway, he, yeah. he has also written, I think it's partly therapy because he was depressed, but the second book he writes is about trees, um, the trees he's known through his life. And as a writer myself, because I'm also a writer as well as an artist, I haven't done much writing, um, I just found that a fascinating way, simple way yeah. of writing a story and really beautiful writing but i wanted to go into him in a bit more detail but i'll just mention this book that i'm that i'm only up to chapter two in it's called what they didn't teach you in art school what you need to know to just survive as an artist and it's by rosalind davis and annabelle tilly the, until this year i did not know what 
an artist's CV you needed to have in it <laughs> because that is completely different from any other CV I've ever it had is. to write. Yeah, because see, then the these CVs, you don't sit there and go, oh, I'm a this and I'm an that, I'm a that. I do this really well. You don't do any of that. It's re yeah, it's it very different. Not like that. So then there's the artist statement that you sometimes ask for, which is different from the artist's bio. Yeah. So you've got these three bits of writing and then you've got elevator 12 words that you should be able to say and goodness only knows what else. So this book really made it clear <laughs> what those three bits of writing were and what yeah. needed to be in them. And so I've now actually written those. They're, they're off with uh, various people being checked. <laughs> um yeah, so, but she goes on to other things like a landing page in your, on your website and goodness only knows what, I haven't read the rest or done yeah. the work. It's taken me weeks to get those few bits of things written um, written up. So that so that's a great practical book. Yeah. And it's, it's a hard back and it's a little bit expensive, but it was definitely worth the money. It saved yeah. a lot of time trying to work all that out. I think that um, the books that I kind of was thinking about was Stephen Pristwell's The War of um, The War yeah. of Art. Yeah, that that yeah. Whole, that what that one was just like, oh here you go, The War of Art is procrastination, and how many times a day can I procrastinate about doing something or just slide something else in so I'm not doing the thing that I really need to do? Oh yeah, yeah. thought it was really good. Art and Fear is a bit like that too. It's about like feel the fear and do it anyway. It's somewhere it's somewhere in my pile of books here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my great big pile of books as well. Um, yeah, and it's about you know. It was I love it, it was good to understand that that there is resistance and that yeah. the resistance is normal and that yeah. there's not something wrong with me because I'm feeling um, I can't get on with it, but it's because there's this resistance. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's yes. because that's because um, our work is important to God, and uh, and there's a bit of a pullback. In fact, there's been a bit of a pullback on our podcast today. <laughs> How many interruptions? I thought, oh, we're over the fear. We'll be able to leap in and get on with it. Uh, but we had yeah. stuff happen. We did, and and you might see that Donna and I have got little. Um, iPhone earphones in. We are actually doing this on our iPhones. It's it, it's super low tech and super low budget. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but we're doing our best and uh, yeah, yeah, yes. And, uh, what art theory books do you read, Linda? Very quickly. Have you read any art theory books? Art theory. Um, yeah. You see, she's saying this like somebody that's been taught what art theory is. So I have no idea what she really means, but I have read a book about all the art colours, okay. that really thick book that talks oh. about where all the art colours come from in the world yeah. and what they're made of and the theories around them and the myths and legends and everything like that. I've read a book about um, the way uh, Monet painted um, yeah. the, using pure colour and and the tones within the colour rather than making something lighter and darker with white and black was that was quite a big um, impact on me. Is this what you mean? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... What have you so, read? <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm still reading this one, which is called The Unquiet Landscape. I've almost finished it. I'm kind of at that stage where I don't really want to finish it. I get this like this with books. I get like, oh, this is such a good book. I don't want to finish it. So I start yeah, reading it and yeah. slower and slower. And slower. <laughs> but anyway, but this is about artists who painted um, basically in the early 20th century and what how they, and and how that shaped how they painted. And it's really interesting. I never really thought about um, painters that I, and printmakers that I particularly have always liked. And why they painted the way they painted, or, or, or how did they, or draw, or print, or do printmaking in the way they did, um, and how it's, you know, it was a huge part of the English, you know, culture yeah. at the time. So I, yeah, I've I've been finding this like yeah. really good. I well, can recommend I, that one. I've read um, I've read Emily Powell's first book, um, 
And we met Emily Powell the other week. We did. And she signed my book, my copy of the book. She did. Um, and she drew a what, flower in it. Huh? Yeah. So her talking about her work and where it comes from, um, and she, the book is, is co-written as she writes it with her sister, who's a doctor, but also she does some paintings. Um, but she talks about her influences and every chapter has a female influence on her work and the different things about those influences I found very interesting, like, well, why do I have to describe my work? Just respond to it. Or um, I can paint really, really big. Or <laughs> yeah. I'm painting from my inner spirit, spirituality. All all sorts of different ways of approaching art uh, it came out of reading her book and her practice. And I, I really like that. And I want to do a bit more of that. Oh, remember we read Asher Lev? Yes. Didn't we? By Chime, Chime Potok? If yeah. I said that right, I don't know. Possibly. It's spelt that way. <laughs> I've never heard it said, so I wouldn't yeah. actually know. So that's that's a, a fictitious book. Yeah, uh, and then the other, there's fiction. another one, isn't there? There's yeah, two the of following, them. There's a second yeah. one. Um, but it's about a Jewish painter and how he had so much uh, struggle, resistance. resistance. Yeah. You know, his father didn't want him to be a painter, basically. Um, yeah, and his life and how how he worked through it and that was an interesting book because I didn't understand how Jews saw Christians until I read that book I found that quite enlightening mm -hmm. um, and also yeah aspects of that about how art worked for him so yeah I guess I've read art theory books Donna maybe <laughs> I don't know <laughs> she reads story of art it's really big it's one of those heavy uni books so you have to read it before you get they get you send you out of the pre-reading list and i had the shock of the new the waves of seeing the story of art um, i'm trying to think of the other ones there was a few but yeah i kind of every so often i stand in the bookshops looking at them and i'm going oh yeah is there any new ones I want to read? Oh, the only newest one I'm on it, um, going to read, and I haven't started it yet. It's on my after I finish this. Uh, after I finish the unquiet. The, after I finish this one, I'm going to read this one, which is Weatherland, and it's probably very similar, but lots of people have said, "Oh, it's absolutely beautiful." So, writers and artists under the English skies. So yeah, right. about how okay. how you know. British people are a bit obsessed with the weather. So, <laughs> oh, yes. what I've just just finished reading, which was oh. really lovely. Oh no, 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 I'm not going to be able to get it to stop. Oh yes, we must mention that one. That's on my list this as one, well. This one, Why Art Matters, by Alastair Gordon. Now he has written a little Bible study as well, which is very yeah. good. Which I'd actually quite like to read a lead a group doing that. That would be really good. So if artists want to do that, let us know. Um. But this one, Why Art Matters, is fab. It's really lovely. It's very similar to Chris John Otto's uh, Army of Artists book, right? That one. But this one is, um, you can buy this in the Tate Bookshop in London. You can yeah. actually buy this. This is out there. Um, yeah. Uh, why is Why does art matter? And why is yes. it important? And what yeah. is it about it that why? we need? why is beauty important was the yeah. chapter that really rocked me you know yeah i to me beauty is fundamentally so important asking why it is important had never occurred to me so the fact that he asks why beauty is important was just a yeah wow moment anyway but he's he writes beautifully um and uh, it I love listening to his accent as well. <laughs> He's from Scotland uh, when he speaks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that is a that is an absolute fab book. It is. As well. But Donna, I, I knew know. we wouldn't be able to do this. I know. There's just <laughs> so many podcast. books. I know. There are so many. There and you know so what I've realised? You probably should give me a list of those. I should give uh, you a to, list. To yeah. put, put down in the... Um, yeah. In the, show notes i think they're called show notes i think but, they are but, but people it's... need to like and follow and subscribe oh thingy. yeah do that <laughs> because because um liking and following 
liking and subscribing um, yeah. makes us more noticeable um, and which means other artists who you think might, I mean, only if you do like us. <laughs> yeah, don't have to. If you don't you like don't. us, it's fine. <laughs> But if you think there's other artists out there that benefit from listening yeah. to us, that's how you connect to them because then, you know, the, our artwork is on the cover of a couple of books. Mine's on the front of a it poetry is. book and yours is on the front of a something other book. It what is. that book? Uh, Unfrozen. I'm trying to remember her name now. Lady AD. Lady AD. That's right. Yeah. She wrote a book and commissioned Donna to do the cover for it. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. And then there and was... I've got my painting, Rainbow Jesus, on the cover of Rosie Palmyra's um, poetry mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. One of the poetry books. She's got several. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh Donna, look, we, we'll go on forever. <laughs> I think we should end. I think we should end. Yes. Because otherwise, Again, the, there's just so many books. Like, how do you stop? <laughs> we'll have to do another book one at some point. <laughs> yeah. See you later. See you later. Bye.